Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation. We have 2a plus 3ab plus b equals 58. a and b are integers. And we're going to evaluate a plus b plus ab. Obviously, we're going to be solving for a and b first, and then we're going to plug them in. But notice that we have a single equation, but two variables. Because a and b are integers, these are called Diophantine equations. And this could be considered a quadratic Diophantine equation because of the factor AB. Anyways, so to be able to solve these problems, we're going to use a method called SFFT, which is abbreviation for Simon's favorite factoring trick. But I can just call it Simon. So in order to be able to use that, we're going to group these terms. So when I look at something like this, the first two terms can be grouped together and I can try to find a common factor, right? What is the common factor going to be? 2a plus 3ab. a seems to be a common factor, so I can go ahead and factor the a out and I'm going to be getting 2 plus 3b. But that's not being followed by 3b, so that's the problem because I want to get the 2 plus 3b again or 3b plus 2 doesn't matter which one. So in most cases, um, I think writing the f uh, product first is a better idea. So let's go ahead and start by switching these terms around. 3ab plus 2a plus b equals 58. And then I'm going to go ahead and take out an a. And that's going to give me 3b plus 2. And then it's going to be followed by b. Now, the issue here is I don't have a 3b. I only have 1b. Can I still take out the b? Yes, I can. Let me show you how we can do this with uh, this method, and then I'll show you an alternative approach. Okay? So, the first thing we can do is we can actually rewrite this, and now I want to get 3b inside the parentheses, so I want to take out a one-third so that when I write the 3b inside the parentheses, I get b, which is what I have, right? So, and of course, this should be followed by 2. But when I multiply one-third by two, I'm bringing in an extra term, which is two-thirds. So that needs to be added on the right-hand side. Make sense? So I added two-thirds to both sides, and then I factored out a one-third, and I got a common factor. That's the whole idea. We're trying to get a common factor. Let's go ahead and take out 3b plus 2 as a common factor. And the other factor is going to be kind of weird, but that's okay. We're going to fix it. A plus one-third, and that's equal to 58 plus two-thirds. I mean, at this point, you're more than welcome to make a common denominator, simplify this, but you're not going to have to do it. Because the next thing we're going to do is actually going to take care of this stuff. And what is that? The fractions. So to take care of the fractions here, and kind of to get something parallel to 3b plus 2, I want to multiply both sides by 3. But the way I multiply by 3 is as follows. I'm not going to multiply, I'm not going to distribute the 3 over the 3b plus 2, but rather here. Make sense? Because my goal is to get rid of the fraction. So it's going to give me 3b plus 2 times, 3 times a plus 1 third is going to be 3a plus 1. And on the right hand side, if I distribute the 3, I'm getting 3 times 58, which is 174 plus threes are going to cancel out here and here. That's going to give me a plus two, so that's going to be 176. Make sense? I hope it does. Now we got a really nice factor, right? We got the factors of 176, and 176 can be factored in a new, you know, number of ways. Let's go ahead and check them out. First of all, 176 can be written as 176 times 1. Right? That's going to give us a pair of equations. So this can be 176, this can be 1. And of course, the opposite could also happen. But let's go ahead and take a look at these cases. And I don't think I need to write that again. Now, 176 times 1 gives us 3b plus 2 equals 176. By the way, if you just solve that on the side, you get 3b equals 174. And 174 is actually divisible by 3. Isn't that cool? 
right? And that will be 58. So B from here is gonna be 58, and we can kind of make an ordered pair here. B is 58. What is A? A is just gonna be zero. So if the problem said solve for integers, we're good. If it says natural numbers or positive integers, then we're not gonna count zero. Make sense? Let's just solve for integers. Now, this is just one of the cases, right? So here's one, one thing we need to be careful about. 3b plus 2 is 2 mod 3, and 3a plus 1 is 1 mod 3. So our factors need to satisfy those criteria. So the next one I'm going to pick is 88 and 2, which gives us 176, right? 88 is not 2 mod 3, because if you subtract 2 from it, you'll get 86, which is not divisible by 3. So we don't have to worry about it. This is not going to work, okay? And we don't want fractions. Let's continue. 3 doesn't go into 176, does it? I don't think so. Uh, 4 does, because that's going to be 4 times 44. And if you subtract 2 from 44, you're going to get a 42, which works. And this will also work. And from here, we're going to be getting A is 1 and B is 14. All right? That's just going to be another pair. Let's continue in this matter. 7, 5, 6, uh, they're not going to work because 3 didn't work. But 8 is going to work. 8 times 22. That's going to give us, wait a minute, 3a plus 1 equals 8 doesn't give us integer solutions. So I have to get rid of that case as well. And the next one after this, going to be 9 doesn't go, 10 doesn't go, 11 goes because 44 goes. Make sense? So if you divide by 4 here, multiply by 4, you're going to get 16. Hopefully you knew that 16 times 11 is 176. But 3b plus 2 cannot be 16 again. This can't be an integer. And then after 11, do we have anything between 11 and 16? Let's think about it. 12, 13, 14, and 15. They don't work. So we have to go now with 16 here and 11 here. And this is going to work because in this case, we're going to get A equals 5 and B equals 3. Make sense? So we're going to go through pretty much all the cases. And then I'll show you the alternative. I'm not going to go through the negatives, but you can easily do them fairly easy to do and now since we turned around we're going to have to go backwards like this but this time we're going to switch the factors on so it's going to be like 8 and 22 and then 4 and 44 and then 2 and 88 and finally 1 and 176 and the next thing we should do is looking at the negatives but that's going to take forever so i'm going to leave it leave that up to you and just to, as a quick reminder this is supposed to be a 3a plus 1 and this is supposed to be 3b plus 2. I just copied that, okay? Now, 3b plus 2 equals 8 is going to give us b equals 6 and a equals 7. So it's going to be 7 comma 6 here. And then if 3b plus 2 is 4, you're not going to get integer solutions from there. And if one of them is not integer, we don't care about the other one. I don't think it's the other one is going to work either. 3b plus 2 equals 2 gives us 0. And what is 87 divided by 3? It's 29, right? 29 comma 0. And finally, if 3b plus 2 is 1, 3b is going to be negative 1, and that's not going to work. So far, these are the solutions we got. Let's go ahead and list them. We have 0, 58, and these are only the non-negative solutions, I think. And then we have the 1, 14, and then we have the 5, 3. Notice that 3, 5 does not work. 7, 6, and 29, 0. And of course, there is more or we can rephrase the problem as looking for non-negative solutions. Okay, let me quickly tell you how we could have approached this slightly differently. Instead of going through the one-third stuff, we could also do the following. Instead of taking out an A and ending up with something like this, I could take out a 3A. Because taking out 3A is nice, and let me tell you why, because that's going to give you a B. But it's also going to give you a two-thirds here, so it's... It's impossible to avoid fractions. Make sense? And at the end, you're going to be adding a fraction to both sides, and you proceed the same way. Or if you want to avoid all this trouble, you divide... Uh, divide? No. Multiply both sides by 3 first. That's kind of like a third alternative. And if you look, think about it, why would you multiply by 3? Because it's the coefficient of um, A here, and we definitely want to give that to B as well. So when you multiply by 3, that's going to give you 9AB plus 6A plus 3B equals, and if you multiply this by 3, it's going to be 174. And then if you think about it, 
Here, you want to take out a 3a so that you end up with 3b plus 2. And then with the 3b plus 2 times 1, you're going to get what you want. That makes sense? This might be a little straightforward, more straightforward for those of you who don't like to deal with fractions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.